What is up, YouTube? Jake Yu-Gi-Oh! here. My name is Michael, and we have the English uh, list for the Slide for the Sky Dragon and Obelisk the Tormentor. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the new cards, some of the uh, reprints, and what to expect from each deck. And then we also have a new track card to talk about as well. But, um, anyway, let's get on to it. So, of course, we got... You know, Slifer's going to be in the deck if you like Slifer for the Sky Dragon. Same with Obelisk. And you don't have copies, even though they're pretty cheap. Um, you could suggest... Uh, but anyway, you can pick these decks up and get them. Um, Soul Crossing, Thunder Force Attack, Ultimate Divine Beast. So these are the new cards right here um, that are coming out. Uh... Soul Crossing is in both the decks, I believe. Yeah, Soul Crossing is in both the decks. Thunder Force Attack and is in the Slifer deck because it pertains to Slifer. And Fist of Fate is in the Obelisk deck because it returns to Obelisk. Um, out of the new cards, um, Slifer has, in my opinion, the better uh, spell card that is the signature spell. And um, Obelisk has the better new angel. Which is the Telus versus the Angel Zero One. Um, so to give a quick rundown of what each of the decks are and what they're trying to do, as I read over some of the cards that I, you know, didn't know off the top of my head, Cipher's deck seems to be more about summoning tokens so that you can tribute some of the tokens, uh, tribute the tokens for Slifer the Sky Dragon. Uh, as an obelisk seems to be more about special summoning from the deck. Granted, it's a very slow way. They, they're all very slow ways of doing it. Um, also, another thing is that Slifer's deck seems to be, um, has a lot of cards that Yugi played, um, like Breaker the Magical Warrior and stuff like that. Whereas Obelisk has, um, just mainly cards to help you summon him. I think Obelisk's deck is more um, tuned, if that makes sense, than Slifer's. I might be wrong. Who knows? But I think that Slifer's deck is a little bit uh, lackluster, in my personal opinion. However, I do think that uh, I do like Slifer more. So, personally, because I like Slifer more, I'll probably buy the Slifer deck. Um, next up, uh, what are some notable reprints? Well, there aren't actually a ton. Um, Electromagnetic Turtle isn't a to isn't like the worst card ever, but it's not necessarily you know uh, exactly the most expensive card. So there's that. Um, Reactor Slime is in this, and Reactor Slime is pretty good for um, for the deck in general because it summons out two tokens, and then you contribute to summon to get a um, Metal Reflect Slime, that way that you can get a Egyptian Slime God, which unfortunately is not in either deck, but it is important to say if you want to, you should pick those cards up. If you do want to play a Slifer or Obelisk deck, that's the way to do it. Um, a very, very important Reaper, and it comes in both the decks, is Harpy's Feather Duster. So Feather Duster is getting reprinted in this, and this is the English, so we are getting these confirmed for the TCG. Um, so Harpy's Feather Duster getting reprinted is pretty big, because right now I think that card is still sitting around like $15, $20, and having access to a common version, which will probably drop the price to around $5 or something like that, is really, really good. Um... Also, this deck is has a lot of the Layer of Darkness cards, so if you maybe miss that deck, and I know that deck is kind of hard to find nowadays, um, you can get at least, you know, Layer of Darkness itself. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you do have some of the other uh, God support, like um, the True Name and all that but this deck also does have card advance and card advance uh lets you look at the top five rearrange and it gives you a normal tribute another tribute summon so that's another thing also that this deck has going for this deck is all about <coughs> summoning tokens and trying to uh get out slifer um the bad side is is i don't think besides the uh true name which card advance helps with 
and everything is there's not really a way to get to Cypher. Um, a card that should probably have been in here, and it's not expensive either, is Mount of the Bound Creator. That card probably should have also been in here as well, because that will protect Cypher and all of that. So that's gonna. So that's uh, Cypher's deck. Uh, overall, I think that. Same thing with Draw Fate. Draw Fate's pretty neat. Overall, I think that Slifer's deck is probably a little bit weaker, and which is kind of sad because I do like Slifer a lot. Um, next up is Obelisk's deck. Obelisk's deck is pretty interesting, and it has, I think, a little bit more, uh, a little bit better synergy. Um, so, uh, level resist wall is interesting um it says that like if you if one of your monsters is destroyed by battle or card effect you can special summon monsters from um, your deck up to the level of it of the destroyed monster so that's pretty interesting um nimble momonga is in this uh deck list so it also helps get out more of itself cyber dragon summons itself hardened armed dragon summons itself uh Evil Swarm Mandrago summons itself. Ra's Disciple also summons uh, more. This whole deck is basically all about summoning more monsters, and that's why I think it's a little bit better than Slifers. Um, this deck also comes with Harpies Feather Duster discard. This also has a way to search it as well. Uh, search Obelisk because of the Gizmex. Um, this one right here, if you uh, if it's normal or special summoned. You can, I believe, discard a card and then search a monster whose attack and defense are the same, which Obelisk has 4,000 attack and defense. So the Gizmex do work well with Obelisk. That's another thing he has going for him. Also, Obelisk can be monster reborn. Uh, so can Slifer, too. And that's why both the decks have monster reborn. Um, but, uh, anyway... This deck also doesn't have Mount of the Bound Creator, which I think is a waste. However, this deck also has... Uh, Forbidden Lance, Chalice, and Dress, which are all pretty decent cards. This deck has uh, Drowning Mirror Force as well, and uh, Call the Haunted. So this deck has more ways to summon, and special summon their monsters, and I think that that makes the uh, Obelisk deck a little bit better for getting him out. I think that uh, overall, um, these decks are interesting, and they're definitely more for the casual player. So if you like the Egyptian God card decks and all that, if you like Egyptian gods and all that, or you want to just play, you know, with your friends, and, you know, maybe you and a friend both pick up one of each, and then you play against each other, that could be fun. That's something you could do. Um, if you actually wanted to build an Egyptian god card deck, I would suggest, um, and make it as competitive as possible, I should say, um, I would suggest building around Raw. Raw's support is a lot more um, cohesive than the other ones, but if you want to build one around these two, I would suggest using some of the raw support and um, going from there. And buying the cards individually than actually buying these decks. Because these decks aren't very good in terms of like competitive wise, but as a casual standpoint, they are pretty cool. And Harvey's Feather Duster is a very good reprint. Uh, and then the last card is a trap card called Ice Barrier, and it's a normal trap card, and its second effect is a hard once per turn. When an attack is declared involving an opponent's monster, change that opponent's monster's attack to zero. Its battle positions cannot be changed. Also, its effects are negated. So that's a pretty decent, um, that's decent, but it's kind of like a little outdated for modern Yu-Gi-Oh! standards, but it doesn't target, so that's kind of, um, so that's kind of relevant. Uh, its second effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard. You cannot special summon monsters until the end of your next turn, except for water monsters. Also, send a water monster there, level 5 or higher water from your deck to your hand, then add a water monster from a graveyard to your hand. Um, so, since you don't have to target the monster and all that, you can actually just get any level 5 or higher water monster from your deck to your hand by using that graveyard effect, and that's why you can't. That's why it has a downside if you can't special summon monsters until the end of your next turn however i do think this card is pretty neat um it's a good foolish burial of goods target for any like more pure water decks 
I do like the second effect a lot. Or the first effect is at, the second effect is really powerful. The first effect is um okay. It's not like it means it's just like it's not the worst card if you draw it. So uh, overall, this card's fine. Um, but anyway, you guys can tell me what you think of the comment section below. Do you like this trap card? And are you excited to pick up the new Egyptian God card decks? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday. And if you want to send me any cool deck profiles or replays, my email is in the description. I would love to see what you can come up with. Maybe summoning uh, Slifer or Obelisk. And of course, and as always, have a wonderful day.